Oh, hey, traveling through space and time is a mother. Oh, dang it, I got the wrong glasses on. <sighs> wrong video. Uh, nope. <laughs> there we go. These are, these are the new ones. Let me know in the comments if you like. These are those first ones better. Um, my wife, my wife made me get these. Also, if, if you like these videos, uh, hit subscribe for my fragile self-esteem. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. In order to teleport with your camera on a tripod, you want to film your background. So you're literally gonna walk away from the camera like this. You're gonna film. You let it sit there just a little longer than that. You're gonna film the background for, you know, five seconds or something. If you're standing for your video, you wanna jump in the air and kind of land hard and oof. Or if you're sitting, you wanna just kind of fall into your chair and then we're gonna edit it up and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that right now. By the way, if you want to do exactly what I did in my opening, I've downloaded all the elements I use in this video, that and a whole bunch more. So you wanna hit that link down there right now, download the elements so you can follow along. Jumping into CapCut, we're gonna take this clip of me that I've given you and we're gonna take just a second or so from the beginning right here. So I'm gonna trim it by hitting the letter Q. Right now the track magnet is on, so when I hit the letter Q, it's going to place a cut here, delete this and slide everything over, just like that. We only need like a second or maybe even less, just about that much. You can see how much we have up here. And I'm gonna hit Command B to place a cut there. And then we're gonna get me when I'm landing. So I jumped in the air, but we don't wanna see the jump, we wanna just see me land, so I'm gonna start when I'm coming down, I'm already coming down here. So I'm at the peak. So I'm gonna delete all of this right here. Type the letter Q, deletes that. Right now, without any transition or effects, it looks like this. Background. Oh, oh, that looks kind of cool, but much better with the transition and sound effects. Now we don't need the audio for this clip. So I'm just gonna click here and drag it down. I'm gonna zoom in a bunch more by holding down the Command key on a Mac, the Control key on a PC and hitting my scroll wheel. Now we're gonna add a transition between these two cuts. You can use any transition, but the one I found that works really well is called Electric Light 2. It looks like this. I'm just gonna drag it onto the timeline. And right now we can see that it's half a second long, which is about the duration we want. And that looks like this. So we're almost done. The only thing we really need besides that is to add some sound effects. And I've given you my favorite teleport sound effects in here. I've got this quick whoosh, which I'm gonna put right about there. And then I have this hard hit to kind of completely sell it. And I like to line up the hard hit right there on the cut so everything pops into place correctly. Before I show you this part finished, I'm gonna add one more sound effect that happens to be built into CapCut. It is called a rise. So I'm gonna make sure you click on sound effects and type rise. And we have, let's see which one it is. I'm not sure, let's try this. Yeah, that one's gonna work great. I'm just gonna add it to the timeline and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit using the same scroll wheel and command and control key. And I really just want something in the beginning because it's dead for a minute here, that whole second, we need something to keep people's attention. So I'm going to just drag this back to here and I'm going to end it right there on the cut. So with a hard hit and the cut, it's gonna end. And then I'm gonna just have it fade up a little bit by dragging this guy over like that. And now we have, oh, hey, traveling. Come on, not bad for like a few seconds of work, right? Imagine being able to dub your videos into another language and have your lips be in sync. Is that possible? Yes, CapCut just came out with a brand new feature where they can dub you in other languages. Check this out. I just click on this video of me, make sure it's highlighted, and then I scroll down under audio to video translator. I click on that and I choose the language I wanna translate from, let's choose English and translate to Chinese. Now we only have three languages available now, but more are coming out. So know that this feature is here and you know, be the first guy on the block to use it. And it takes a second because I believe it sends it up to the cloud and does all its magic and sends it back to you. Um, but when it's done, you get this. What? No way, my lips were in sync. I was speaking Chinese in my voice. Insane, right? By the way, dude, if you're serious about YouTube, yes, keep watching my videos, but you need to take my course, Edit with Trev and Master CapCut, because I'll have you editing in like two days, knowing virtually everything that CapCut does to make your videos awesome. Plus, I teach you the 10 things that you should be doing with every single videos to get more views and more subscribers. And I promise you, like 100%, if you do these 10 things, you will get more views and subs, and I guarantee you are not doing all of them now. So go ahead and hit the link below and uh, sign up for my course. It, 
it'll, it'll change your life. Oh, and if you don't like it, there's, there's no risk. I'll just give you all your money back. Imagine being able to add captions in other languages, even if you don't speak that language. Well, CapCut just came out with the ability to do that. You just select the clip in the timeline, click captions, select the language you are speaking, and then choose the language you want captions in. We're gonna choose, let's say, uh, Espanol, porque yo sí hablo un poquito español. And all you do is hit generate, and you wait a second, and this is a little faster than the, uh, the other thing we just did, and bam, we have our captions right here. They have them in English and Spanish, so all you do is you delete the English ones, and you can leave it like that, but obviously you're gonna want probably bigger captions, so just a really quick tutorial on captions. Just highlight one caption, go up here to captions, and you want to create spaces after a couple words. So we'll just go ahead and go space here, just so there aren't so many words on the screen at once. And here, and here, and here, and maybe here. So this looks okay like this, but the font is small and hard to read. So let's go ahead and tweak it out a little bit. Next, we're gonna jump over to templates and select captions. Then we've got a bunch of these caption animations that are really cool. There's a bunch of free ones and paid ones. Let's go ahead and scroll down and try, I don't know, maybe this one. And now look how much more readable that is. Let's go ahead and watch this. Let me know what you think. Imagine how many more people you could reach with your videos if you could dub them into other languages. Let's say you've ordered your new Learjet, but you have no photos of it, and you want to make your YouTube video about your Learjet. So you don't want to steal photos off the internet, just, just make them in CapCut. You jump over to Media, you select AI Generated, and then you simply type in Learjet 45 flying over a sunset. Let's see, let's see what happens. Oh, before you do that, by the way, hit Adjust. So you can make it general, not anime. Unless you want anime, make it 16 by nine, unless you're going for a vertical video in a short or TikTok or something and you use nine by 16. Then you want to drag steps all the way up to get the highest quality. And then we hit generate and we wait and see how Kafka does creating our jet, you know, before we take delivery. Very quickly, we have several options here. We can click on them and see them in low resolution. And I don't know, I think I, think I like that one. To make it high resolution, you simply hit this HD button here and it'll generate it in higher resolution. And now when I click on it, look right here so you can see the difference and bam, high resolution. To edit your timeline, you just hit this plus sign and bam, you got a jet. You can do whatever you want with it. It's also very useful to use this text to image feature to generate thumbnails for YouTube or at least backgrounds. So let's, let's make a background. Let's say orange tech background. Hit enter and see what it comes up with. We've got these options. I don't really like any of them. I said tech, let's change it to high tech background. So I'll go high tech and see if it creates something that is closer to what I was looking for. With these AI image generators, you gotta get good at the prompts and try a few things sometimes before you get what you're actually looking for. I don't like any of those either. Let's do it one more time by hitting this retry button. Here's a few more options and actually, I think I like uh, that one right there. So let's make it high definition, you know, high resolution by hitting this HD guy right here. Now when I click on it, yeah, it looks way cooler. I'm gonna delete this plane out of the background, hit the plus sign to put it in my timeline. And that is gonna be a background for a fake thumbnail I'm gonna make right now. I'm gonna go back to my local tab and find this picture of me, which will be for a pretend thumbnail. And oh no, I can't see the background, what do I do? I click on me, I just go to cut out, hit auto cut out, only human figures will be cut out. So this is one way to make a thumbnail very easily using CapCut. It's like, bam, I'm already cut out. You know how long that would take in Photoshop? Well, the old Photoshop when you had to like do, 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 draw lines. And you know, it looks okay, but I've noticed that I'm kind of cooler and the background's much warmer. How could I warm me up? CapCut allows us to relight our image. I didn't light it warm, but I can make it warm. So all I do is I go to video, basic, make sure this guy's highlighted. By the way, this works on still images and video. And I scroll down to this pro feature called Relight. And we have a few options. We can light my face, the ambience. We can get creative with crazy stuff that looks like this. And you can create presets, create your own thing. We're just gonna go with facial and I'm gonna make it warmer. So bam, it's warmer already, but I want more control over that. Now, when I 
added this warm light, it gave me two lights. I really only want one. So I'm gonna delete one of them and just drag this guy over to this side. And you know, that's pretty great, but it's a little bit harsh. So I'm going to lower the intensity right here. And it's already orange like the background, so that worked out really nicely. And the radius determines how far this light goes. So if I drag this all the way to the left, it's not going anywhere. And as I drag it to the right, it lights it more and more and more of me. And it's even lighting up my fingers over on that side. So somewhere around here looks pretty great. And you can adjust how far away the light is. It does something similar to radius. And we can adjust the brightness and we can adjust the highlights as well. And we don't wanna crank those up. They look pretty great like there. And the position, of course. And so I'm gonna put it right here and turn the brightness up a tiny bit. And bam, here's what it looks like before and after. And now look how much better that blends with the background. You can use this on your videos. It's a great way to fix something that maybe you didn't light so well the first time. By the way, these videos take a long time to make and it really sucks away time from my family very often, in fact, I. I got in trouble like a half hour ago. I said it'd be done and she was waiting for me and, and I wasn't. So if you could do me a favor, um, if you look on YouTube and you go down here, you see this thing called thanks. If you don't see it, you click these three buttons here and you'll see thanks. But if you click on that, you know, you can send me maybe a couple bucks to help me buy flowers for my wife. By the way, you can slide it as far as you want this way and you know, more is better, but you know, every penny I am super grateful for. You don't have to, but if you're in a position to, that'd be freaking awesome, thanks. Have you ever seen a movie and gone, dang, I wish I could make my video look like that movie. Well, you can in CapCut. They've got a pretty new feature, which I love. So we're gonna take this video and make it look like, I don't know, how about John Wick? I've got this image of John Wick. I just got a screen grab off the internet. That's the color, the style of John Wick. So all I do is I click on this clip that I want to modify and I jump over to adjustment and right here, the second one from the top at the moment, they move things around is something called color match. I click on this guy, then I click on this plus sign over here, and I choose the image I want to use as a source for the color. And it's the end of my timeline, it's this image right here. So I position the playhead over it. I can also select local and choose a file on my computer, a still image, but it's already here. So I'm just gonna make sure my play is positioned on it so I can see it, then I hit okay. And suddenly I went from Trevor to I look just like John Wick. We're practically twins now. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. You can adjust the strength. You want to go super intense, go all the way in or, or turn it down a bit. But I think it looks super cool. And to see what it looked like before, I just go color match off, on, off, on. And now this is much more consistent with that scene from John Wick. And you do that with any movie, any still image. This is, this is freaking amazing. Have you ever seen shots where it starts <laughs> super fast and it goes, <laughs> and it slows down? That's, that's easy to do. You don't even really need to know anything. Let's go ahead and take this uh, shot of icebergs in Iceland. Yeah, those, are, those are real icebergs and that ice was really that blue. It was pretty insane. Let's say we wanted to have it go faster than slower or, or something. There's some cool stuff built in. You just jump up here to speed after the clip is clicked on and you can go normal. And I could slow it down or speed it up by dragging that thing around or I could hit these curves and the curves give me built-in options to adjust the speed of something, which are kind of cool. So we can choose montage, which would look like this. Or we could choose hero time, which would look like this. So it's ramping up and it's gently slowing it down. Now to do that in the old days, manually it would take a long time, but this is super easy. You can adjust these to your liking. What I would usually do with something like this and the trick for making speed ramps look good is to have stable shots. You want something that is smooth, a drone works good, or if you're on a bicycle with a shot, so it's like moving smoothly. If you're like bouncing around like that, these aren't gonna look good. But with a drone, it looks amazing. And, and you you have this shot. You know what you want with this shot. It's, it's yours. You can use it copyright free in all of your videos. You don't even have to credit me. So make sure you, you downloaded those. The one that would work for this is this one called Flash In, where it starts fast and it slows down like this. If you ever wanna make a time lapse, they look pretty cool, right? You see them all over the place on YouTube. And what if your camera can't do a time lapse or you forgot to shoot it and the camera just rolled for a really long time, you wanna make a time lapse, super easy to do in CapCut. You just drag the clip into the timeline and right now this clip is 10 minutes long. I don't want any sound because it's gonna be going really fast. I'm just gonna drag the sound down. And I do want just a little bit at the end to not be a time lapse. So I'm going to 
find where I want it to be not time lapsey, like right about there, I think. So I'm gonna put a cut right there so I can keep my thumbs ups and hit Command B. And I'm gonna make sure the track map gets on, it is. I'm gonna click on this guy, go to speed, and just make it, I don't know, 100X, super fast. That's like, I would have killed to have this when I was using Premiere in Hollywood a few years ago. They had it, you know, pretty pretty nerfed and it was a pain to get things really sped up like that. But now it's it's great. So now I've got this, it looks pretty good, um, but it's, you know, it's taking way too long for anything anybody wanna watch. People are good for like a second. So the trick to get more than 100 times is to right click it and choose create compound clip and now CapCut thinks it's a new clip. So now I can just go ahead into speed again and I can double the speed. And so now with that clip double speeded, it looks like this and it'll go right into the clip of me not time-lapsing. So here we go. Bam! And my suggestion is when you're doing a time-lapse like that and you stop and you're going to like normal speed, just stop the music, add a sound effect or something. That's super cool. By the way, the OG dude that did time lapses in his vlogs was Casey Neistat, my favorite YouTuber of all time. I made a video in his style and it's probably one of my favorite videos I've ever made on this channel. So if you haven't seen it, you should watch it right now. It, it's right there. It's great.